Welcome back. You're watching us here on Mad About Markets. We put the spotlight on the alcohol industry in India. And as always, we talk about the yays and mays of the industry. Ritu, it's a new season, hmm. but old habits. I will still go with the yays. We know you need the wins, so why don't you get on with Let's it? Let's go with the wins then, the yays. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is the demographic dividend. 33% of India's population is uh, of drinking age right now. That number is going all the way up to 39%. And as that grows, you know, we have income levels of people growing as well. So that means that with people who are moving, uh, uh, you know, to urban cities more, their income growing and they are more eligible to drink, they will go ahead and drink. And what are they drinking? They're drinking the, drinking the better stuff. So premiumization is one of the trends that we're witnessing in this industry. A lot more people having a lot more disposable income to have better alcohol. And all of that through a new channel of sales that we discovered during the pandemic, which was basically in-home consumption home delivery and now that people are having alcohol at home they don't have to spend extra money that they do at restaurants so they use that money to buy better alcohol and that is what talks about premiumization and finally everyone talks about how uh, you know there is a ban on advertising mm -hmm. on alcohol uh, in above the line media yeah. but they have found newer ways digital mm -hmm. media is one of them and the second one is there are so many events that are taking place so they partner mm -hmm. with that and uh, make it make their products known but why is the ban there in the first place right so well, that is the flip side the abuse of alcohol is perceived as one of the leading risk factors worldwide and has a direct impact on health alcohol beverage industry has also been saddled with the extra burden of regulations because of the perceived effect and abuse of alcohol these policies have everything from control on production pricing storage movement consumption you name it now complete or partial prohibition exists in many states in india from gujarat bihar all the way to Nagaland and Mizoram. Also, states in India observe dry days on major religious festivals and occasions, unique only to the Indian market. And of course, foreign liquor important in India is charged under customs duty and beverages bottled here are subject to excise and other duties as per the rules of each state. So the burden of regulation and high taxes is definitely a me. That is a big me. So let's take that question then to Shekhar Ramurthy. Well, Shekhar, there are high taxes, there's prohibition in some states. Every state has its own tax policy for alcohol. What are the challenges for the industry? It is not an easy industry to be in. Now, the biggest challenge is regulation. Regulation. So, uh, like I've, I've said, uh, the regulatory framework is very complex and not very friendly. Why do I say that? Because we have to navigate rules in each and every state. No other business in India has to do that. Uh, and that makes it very complicated. And, and the state has a disproportionate control over our business. Uh, so that, that's the, one of the biggest challenges. When I mentioned about societal mores in Bollywood, I, and the, the, the advantage of that is that when we talk to bureaucrats today about policy, they are receptive to us. No, if, you know, many analysts ask us, what do you see as a difference uh, today between, let's say, five years back or 10 years back. And I would say that when we talk to regulators, when we talk to uh, bureaucrats, they're more receptive to us. They would listen to you. I'm not saying they make it much easier in terms of rules and regulations, because that, and you talk to anybody in our business, they'll probably say the biggest challenge in our business is the regulatory framework. Okay, so regulators are more receptive today. But nonetheless, Ankur, let me come to you. You know, what is the future for young companies like you? You know, you started out as a brand that was a challenger to Kingfisher. We heard that earlier from Anand, you made white beer and then you started out selling draft beers. Will small and newer guys like you have to do the same? I mean, where do you think you went wrong in your strategy, if at all? <clears throat> I think the uh, idea behind launching new products, whether it is wheat beers or uh, launching beers on tap through draft, uh, uh, has been one of finding white spaces in the marketplace, finding things that consumers want, but that the competition is not focused on. And I think that's really helped us go a long way because if you look at our business and our scale today, we are definitely... Uh, 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 the fourth largest beer company in the country behind the big three. Uh, in several states, we are actually the number two or the number three player already. Uh, and when you look at premium, we are the number one player uh, on draft beers with the number one wheat beers in the country, with the number one IPAs in the country and so on and so forth. So I think finding that point of difference uh, and executing around it is very much uh, uh, almost a necessity and a requirement for emerging players such as ours. 
Well, you are a number four player in the country, but remember, this is a country where we have a long tail of products with the mass being with the top two or three players itself. But let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, marketing your products. Anand, you know, there is a ban, above the line advertising, ban on alcohol. How do you then market a new product? Is that a challenge? And have you used the internet uh, as a result of that? Yes, of course, sure. There, there is the the, the above the line uh, ban on uh, you know on advertising on TV, for example. But my argument would be that you know as a small player, maybe that's that's beneficial uh, for us because in any case, we would never have the budgets to you know to go advertising during the IPL or uh, or whatever else. Uh, so that's not a path we would have taken, regardless of the ban or or not. Um, social media also is is great but it can also only take you so far i think uh, there's there's this understanding that you know social media is the end all of uh, uh, you know of of getting a brand out there whereas really in this space especially if you start looking at the craft uh, or the premium end of things what really works is uh, is on ground events uh, is, is large scale small scale uh, you know, liquid lips, as we call it, is is actually getting people to try your spirit, try your try your beverage. Uh, that's really proof of concept, and then you let uh, word of mouth kind of take over and build momentum. All right, uh, it is time now to ask the bigger question, and that is: Is there enough opportunity in India's alcohol industry, despite the regulatory challenges? Let me come to you, Anand. Uh, what do you believe? Is there going to be a cap at some point, or do you think there is ample opportunity for growth? So there is ample opportunity right now. Um, I feel that should that should last uh, at least as far as we can see, which is maybe three to five years down the road. Uh, that should that should last, and that should just you know keep growing from strength to strength. Shekhar, what do you feel? Uh, the society doesn't really look down upon alcohol. So there is, there is acceptance. Two, uh, economically, our country is going to grow. We are still a really, very poor country. Uh, three, and, and this is something which, which I won't shy from mentioning. Alcohol revenue is very important to the states. You know, uh, this the, is the, 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 the one of the most significant uh, revenue earners for each of the states. Like I said, it's, it's part of the state subject. So the fact that there is economic growth, the fact that uh, the, the society is not, is not, doesn't frown upon alcohol, but is acceptive of alcohol, the fact that uh, revenues from alcohol are important to the state, uh, all these, and apart from various other trends that are happening in the country, to me, are indicative of the fact that this is a growth business. Of course, of course, I think, and I want to say this, uh, we as the alcohol industry are very mindful of the fact that we have to be responsible. And what do I mean by responsible? Uh, we shouldn't promote alcohol to underage. We shouldn't promote bridge drinking. We shouldn't promote uh, drink and drive and various other uh, things which are not good for society. So, Whilst I say that there is growth opportunity and we will definitely take part in it because of the uh, socioeconomic factors which I mentioned, but in a responsible manner. Okay, we've heard from the gin and the whiskey makers. Ankur, you have the final word. No, I think the Indian market is deep enough and it's big enough, right? This is a category, uh, if you just look at beer, beer is larger in terms of value by... Uh, compared to all soft drinks put together. So whether it's carbonated soft drink like Pepsi and Coke, whether it is uh, ready to drink juices or uh, other, other soft beverages, uh, the money that consumers spend on beer in India is higher than the money that they spend on soft beverages. Uh, and this is a market that's been growing at 10% Kega. And this is despite the fact that uh, on a per capita basis, when you look at beer, India is nearly 115 of other emerging markets such as Vietnam, Thailand, China, etc. So I think there's tremendous headroom and we expect that the beer market will uh, more than double in the next seven to eight years from about $8 billion today to about $20 billion by 2030. Ankur, Anand, Shekhar, thank you so much for joining in and throwing light on this sunlight industry or maybe post-sunset industry if you should. <laughs> Thank you and cheers, gentlemen. On that note, we will wrap up on this edition of Mad About Markets. Stay tuned.